When several tetrahedral centers are connected together, as is typical in organic molecules, complex shape can arise. Because of this, we're interested in being able to characterize the properties, geometric properties, of complex shape. Chirality is one such geometric property that we're interested in. Chirality is a property of a geometric object, not of a molecule, and so any object we can distinguish as to whether or not it has the property of chirality. All of the object, objects shown in the left-hand box are common to you, and they all have the property of being chiral. Compare those to the lack of chirality in the objects that are in the right-hand box. The lack of chirality we call achiral, and so each of these objects are achiral objects. You'll notice that they all have a mirror plane relationship that divides the left half and the right half of the molecule into two equal parts. Compare that to the objects on the left hand side. None of these are able to be divided into two equal halves by such a mirror plane. Strictly speaking, the definition of a chiral object is an object that's not superimposable on its mirror image. That sounds an awful lot like in antimers. In antimers, as you might recall, could not be superimposed on their mirror images. So we can say that all enantiomers are indeed chiral. In deciding if a molecule is chiral or achiral, the definition that I just gave you is somewhat impractical. There's an easier and more efficient way to determine the property of chirality. Any molecule that possesses a plane of symmetry or any molecule that possesses an inversion center lacks chirality and is achiral. An example is the chlorofluoromethane that's shown here. You can see from these two views that it has a plane of symmetry that divides the molecule perfectly into two equal parts, just like the ladder or the fork or the shovel that I previously showed you. You can see that the hydrogen atom, upon reflection through the plane, finds another hydrogen atom on equal equidistant on the other side. There's a very nice demonstration that you should spend a little bit of time with that you can see the, what it means to have a, a plane of symmetry. Ammonia has three planes of symmetry that divide the molecule. Each of these planes divides the molecule into half. You'll notice when I show you this demo that, let me turn off some of these planes, upon reflection all of the atoms that lie on the plane, such as the nitrogen for this plane and this hydrogen, don't move. So if I invoke the action of reflection, only those atoms that are on opposite sides of the plane are reflected through the plane, whereas the nitrogen and the hydrogen remain fixed. If I replace one of the hydrogen atoms in the achiral molecule chlorofluoromethane with a bromine, the molecule becomes chiral because the mirror plane that was present in chlorofluoromethane has vanished. You can see that now the bromine and the hydrogen are not related across this plane that's shown in yellow. This plane that's shown in yellow is not a plane of symmetry for this molecule. Therefore, the molecule bromochloromethane, which has no plane of symmetry whatsoever, is a chiral molecule. The absence of a mirror plane makes this molecule chiral. The presence of a mirror plane makes this molecule achiral. In addition to a plane of symmetry, a molecule that has an inversion center is also achiral, as the example here illustrates. First of all, convince yourself that this fairly complicated molecule has no plane of symmetry. Any way that you try to divide the molecule into two equal parts, like I've done here, you'll see that some of the groups upon reflection will find a different group on the opposite side. No matter how you try, you'll never find a plane of symmetry in this molecule. What it does possess is an inversion center, and the inversion center is best seen by looking at the three-dimensional representation of this structure. Make sure that you can take this line angle drawing with all of its wedges and dashes and see the relationship, the up and down relationship, in this three-dimensional view. The inversion center means that a line passing from any atom through the center to an equidistant from that center on the opposite side will find the same group, 
the methyl group on one end finds the methyl group on the other end. And every other atom has that same characteristic. That's what we mean by an inversion center. The presence of an inversion center, even though it has no mirror plane, makes this molecule achiral. To get some practice looking for inversion centers, call up the gallery of molecules and head over to point group CI. Molecules that have CI symmetry have an inversion center but don't have a mirror plane, like this dibromodichlorocyclohexane. What you can see when you click on the inversion center element is a point appears in the center of the molecule, that's of course the inversion center, and then performing the operation executes an animation that passes every atom on a line through that inversion center and finds the same atom on the opposite end. All of these molecules, all the molecules that have this inversion center, are achiral.